CNBC's Jennifer McLogan reports tonight from Rollsburg, West Virginia. It's a small town that was all but destroyed. It was the worst flood in the state's history. In Rollsburg, population 1,000, food, medical supplies, and safe drinking water were in short supply. Every riverbank home was destroyed. So were the town's medical building, church, and gymnasium. The town is just, it's just gone. There's no place for the kids to go to school or anything now. God sent that we haven't lost anybody we know of. It took only one hour after the Cheat River crested here for 100 homes and businesses to be swept away. My mother was 83. I got her out and got her over to Oakland. And there's a lot of people here that needs a lot of help. National Guardsmen have been sent to help with the cleanup. 75-year-old Vernon Kearns and his family returned home to find it gone. We lost everything we had. We didn't have nothing to throw it home. His children and wife Mary helped him dig for a hope chest he said he'd kept since they were married in 1932. It contained their life savings. Later today, it was found and returned, all $3,000 intact. You know that song they say, God be with you? And he was with us and he took us through. Town officials say the average age of residents here is 65. They say they fear there is little chance Roseburg can ever recover. It's a powerful site, and rivers have been like this throughout the mid-Atlantic states. This is the Potomac, snaking through West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. Upriver, entire communities have been isolated by water that is 14 feet above flood stage. Trains have been stalled and houses have just washed away. I've never seen up this far, never. But some have. Residents of this area lost their homes once before, back in 1972, to the flooding produced by a hurricane. The flood of Agnes, yes, it was up over our cabin and destroyed it completely. These waters will be five feet higher than Hurricane Agnes when they crest late tonight in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. From here in Pawpaw, West Virginia, the flood crest moved southward along the Potomac, leaving behind a swath of destruction and the filthy deposits of its passage. In Pawpaw, the water climbed to well above eye level, even at the convenience store a quarter mile from the river. This is a road which ran through a mobile home park on the edge of downtown Pawpaw. The rapidly rising wall of water swept through here, ripping the mobile homes off of their foundations and casting them up at random downstream. Bud Ryan is one of the people who lived here. Well, the water just came up so fast and, uh, you know, we just had to abandon ship. It's about all, you know, that's just the way it is. Just grab, you know, just grab some my clothes and a few guns and that was it. The cleanup in Paw Paw was underway at mid-morning and will take weeks. You know, the hardest part I had was helping my best friends, you know, pack up and move them. They're going, you know. Kennedy visited three towns devastated by November's flood beginning at Albright in the morning. There was, a, there was a house sitting over here beside this greenhouse on this side of it. The house was washed over there with a telephone pole. Kennedy was with his sons Teddy Jr. and Patrick and his nephew Mark Shriver. He emphasized the trip was a Christmas trip for the family to let the people of West Virginia know that someone cares. And he said a question is, as America responds to crises abroad, are we responding to the crises at home? I thought it was important in the spirit of Christmas to, to, uh, to reach out to people to let them know that there are people who do care about those that are in need and trying to help themselves and uh, who, are, who are suffering. Kennedy later left Albright to drive to Rollsburg, where he conducted a similar walking tour. At public meetings in both towns, residents aired uncertainty for their future. But my concern is for these people that um, have had to leave the state, they've had to leave their homes, well, their home left in first. And we wonder what's going to be done for these people, these older people that absolutely cannot start over again. My concern is for the town, the displacement of the people. We need all the people that are in the town here. We've lost about 60 homes, and you can imagine what that's going to do to this community. If every agency, federal, state, whatever, uh, has caused confusion rather than security. 
Senator, after seeing Rollsburg now and Albright both, what's your impressions? Well, first of all, there's no question of the devastation. Uh, there has to be people who see their whole uh, life savings uh, disappear before them. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, I know it's been compared to the devastation of World War II. I had the chance after the war to see many of those uh, communities in uh, Europe. Uh, and I think, obviously, it's frustrating in terms of the bureaucracy, uh, FEMA and SBA. But I think you want to take, uh, I'm enormously impressed by uh, the volunteers that have come in here. They've come in here from the university. They've come in here from a number of the religious groups. I talked to people in their homes, and they said it made a very substantial difference. Kennedy says he came to West Virginia because of his family ties to the state. Brother John made a mark here in 1960. Brother Bobby followed a few years later. Son Patrick even rafted down the same Cheat River that flooded seven weeks ago today. For flood victims in the state of West Virginia, they're looking for hope. Senator Kennedy's visit here brings national attention to the tragedy that hit this state and also a glimmer of hope for the victims of that flood.